It's a wild thing that we experience. Sometimes just saying someone's name uh, allows us to, you know, picture the person and also their work. Like if I say the name Michelangelo and Donatello, Raphael, Leonardo, I think many of you will instantly think of, well, t t Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But no, uh, you know, I'm talking about the artist, Michelangelo, the Sistine Chapel. Uh, you know, it comes to mind. Also, I could keep the list going. We could talk about Van Gogh and Monet and Picasso. We could talk about Dali. But what if I say the name Cassius Marcellus Coolidge? Does that evoke an artist and a painting to you? Okay, the name itself wouldn't to me either. But what about this painting? Do you know it? That's right, it's the 1894 Dogs Playing Poker. And I would say that this painting's not going to trigger anybody, but recently on a carnival cruise, a giant poodle and a slot machine triggered one of those cruisers and straight up brought out their skepticism. Skepticism about the dog and skepticism about its owner. And well, that's today's episode. Let's talk about dogs playing poker and poodles playing slots. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. Let's start this discussion with the message that was sent to Carnival brand ambassador John Heald. He posted this yesterday on his Facebook page. He doesn't include the name, so we don't know if it's a woman or a man or whatever kind of concerned cruising citizen that sent this in. But here's the message, and I'm quoting. Hey, question. There was a visually impaired. Have you ever noticed how the skeptics use the air quotes? There was a visually impaired man on our 1105 Horizon cruise with a service dog. I have never seen a giant poodle dog. I have never heard of these being used as seeing eye dogs. On another note, the man was seen playing slot machines in the casino and he was the only one at the table. Do they have special braille machines or how does gambling work when you're visually impaired? My point is dogs should not be allowed to be on board, especially in public places like the casino and the main dining hall. What checks does Carnival do to make sure this was a real seeing eye dog? Because hundreds, hundreds of us had our suspicions. It was not SMH which stands for Suspicious Man Hater, I think. No, I was shaking my head. So apparently hundreds of passengers gathered with this commenter to observe a visually impaired man playing a slot machine with his giant service dog poodle. And then they got together and they had a conversation to ascertain whether or not this visually impaired person, whether their dog was actually a service dog. And if you wanna read between the lines, I think of this message, they're questioning whether or not this person that's claiming to be visually impaired is actually visually impaired. What's happened to our world, really? What has happened to our world where you're gonna question the, the visual impairment of a per Okay, I know what's happened to our world. To be honest, I just recently flew on Allegiant and they were like, look at this picture. Look at all the wheelchairs stacked up in front of this airplane. And also recently I'd flown on Southwest and a funny story, we'll get back to the giant dog story in a minute. Funny story, I was up close. I was close to the front of the airplane and I could hear the uh, flight attendants talking to each other. And uh, one of the flight attendants said to another, oh, this is gonna be another one of those miracle flights. Uh, we had about 20 wheelchairs, people needing wheelchairs to get through to the gate and get on the plane, but we'll only need like two or three wheelchairs when people leave because they got healed during the flight. I, I guess this starts to explain where some of the cynicism comes from because we see people obviously gaming the system. But when it comes to cruising, fortunately, there's some hard and fast rules when it comes to service animals. Uh, again, I, it blows my mind if somebody is questioning whether or not somebody who's claiming to be visually impaired is actually visually impaired. And then to go beyond like, oh, well, if they're visually impaired, how can they work the slot machine or be in the casino? Look, um, if you're not 
visually impaired or if you're not, if you don't have an impairment at all, the last thing you should be doing is questioning the ability of the impaired person to live their life. Uh, you should just be thankful that you, uh, you know, are not having to learn the things that people that are impaired have to learn and just be grateful for the things that you have instead of sitting around and going, is that blind guy really blind? And there's all kinds of different levels of visual impairment too. You don't have to be like in the dark, completely, you know, blackout blind to have a visual impairment. But do you know what almost 100% of human beings can be? They can be empathetic toward others. Now, I know there's some people with some, you know, uh, challenges in their brain that doesn't allow them to be empathetic. But I would say that the majority of people that aren't being empathetic, they're they could be empathetic. And certainly I can hear some of you out there saying, well, Tony, that's not right. That's not right for people to game the system by somebody else gaming the system that I'm possibly being disadvantaged. Well, we don't have a lot of choice in the matter. We can go at it one or two ways. We can suspect that everybody who claims to have some sort of challenge in life is lying and throw out the people that do have a challenge because of the people that are faking the challenge. Or we can be empathetic and say, look, I would rather make sure that I have empathy and sympathy for those that are challenged, those that are in need. And yeah, every once in a while, that means I might be empathetic or sympathetic for somebody that is gaming the system. But what I do know about life is that, well, dishonesty has its own rewards. And for me, I feel better about myself being an empathetic, sympathetic person, throwing the net wide and covering even those that are taking advantage of me than uh, throwing everybody out because I don't want to be taken advantage by the one. That's just my philosophy. It's worked out really well for for me, I, I sleep well at night and I don't have a lot of stress and uh, I don't really let what other people do worry me. But fortunately, we do get some guidance from Carnival Cruise Line. Are they verifying that service dogs are actually service dogs and they're not just pets? Let me say this before I read the statement. Carnival Cruise Line, not pet friendly. You're not allowed to bring a pet on board and this giant poodle was not a pet. This is what John Heald says. Thank you for writing to me. I will simply say that we do check very thoroughly and carefully. The only dogs Carnival permits aboard our ships are working service dogs. He doesn't put it in air quotes. He's saying it as a fact. John said the only dogs Carnival permits aboard our ships are working service dogs, which are legally defined and individually trained to meet disability related needs by performing tasks like guiding blind person, alerting a deaf person, pulling wheelchairs, alerting and protecting a person who is having a seizure or performing other special tasks. Working service dogs are not pets. As for them being allowed on board, well, we are proud to be able to say that along with the following ADA requirements that we love having these guests on board because they deserve to have fun as much as anyone, even more perhaps. John finishes it up with this. The dogs are allowed in the dining room. They are allowed in the casino. In fact, the service dogs are even allowed to play the slot machines. The dogs can also play blackjack and roulette, but they have to, they have to go outside for craps, though. John ends with a jokey joke. A good one at that. This whole story is kind of an interesting commentary about where we're at in society right now. There's certainly people out there gaming the system, but it doesn't mean that everybody is gaming the system. And are we so jaded that now we have to question whether everything is gaming the system, questioning everything, verifying, trust but verify, uh, or is some of it just a little too ridiculous? What say ye on the state of citizenry, uh, specifically in the cruising community? Uh, leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great Saturday. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Deal me in, Fido. Bye. Cruise news.